What's up everybody, Pete the Hybrid Guy here and welcome back to the channel. Got a great episode for you today. We're gonna to be talking again about hybrid batteries and this time we're gonna be taking a look at the Next Power sodium ion battery that has just come out to market and will be available for purchase here very, very soon. We're gonna do a deep dive into what this is. We're gonna look at all the features and benefits of the battery as well as why Next Power decided to go with sodium ion versus their LFP batteries that they were currently using. We're also gonna talk about battery manufacturer CATL, uh, the Chinese battery manufacturer that's been working with Tesla. And we're gonna talk about why I really think and feel that this is the future of hybrid batteries. So stay tuned and let's get started. Thanks for joining me today. And before we dive into all the real cool features and benefits of this new sodium ion battery, I wanna give a brief history of where Project Lithium came from, why Next Power, why all of these different things. So you as the viewer can maybe have a better understanding of why this battery is important to not only you or me, but to the rest of the world. Um, when hybrids came out, clear back in 1997 in Japan, uh, they used and still do today in a lot of the hybrids that are out there, they use a nickel metal hydride, which is a fantastic technology. Uh, it's great. It's very robust. It lasts a long time. Toyota engineers really did a lot of work in testing the durability and longevity of those batteries. But we now have come to a point in history where we have 30 plus years of battery evolution. We have loads and hundreds and millions of miles of testing on, on batteries in different types of situations to where it makes us question, is nickel metal still the best battery for a hybrid or a Prius specifically, right? And if you can see my Gen 2 back here, it came standard with a nickel metal hydride battery and it works really good. I have no complaints with it me that Toyota really did their research in ensuring that they were going to put a quality product out, which they have. Um, that being said, I do believe in the evolution of things. And even watching Toyota as they've put new vehicles out, some of their vehicles are coming equipped with lithium ion. Uh, if you don't know much about Toyota and you're just learning about Toyota, who they are as a company for the first time, um, they do research and they research and they research and they do that to prove out their methods so when they put a vehicle out to the market they know how it's probably going to fare and what they can expect from the consumers which is why they've stayed with nickel metal and lithium ion they've proved those systems out they've built uh, a lot of engineering and quality into there and so if you're in a position to where you need a new hybrid battery for your vehicle getting a new OEM nickel metal battery is definitely something that I would tell you to consider simply because that is good technology and it is proven over time. So if I'm saying how good nickel is, why would I sit here and talk about this sodium battery, right? Why would I do that? Next power came about because to get a new OEM battery can be expensive and to get a refurbished or used battery can also be really expensive. Plus you don't know what you're going to get really for a good operating hybrid, what you need is a battery that is fresh material that can give you the most value for your dollar. Uh, one of the things that uh, Next Power did initially is they created an LFP battery, a lithium iron phosphate battery, and they went through a few iterations of that and have since decided to move on from that technology and focus more on the sodium ion. And we'll get into that in just a moment. So there's several things that I want to talk about over the next few minutes here, and it's all the different features and benefits that this battery has and why Next Power decided to transition from LFP to sodium ion. The first being the temperature range. LFP fell short in the temperature range simply because if it was uh, low on state of charge and it was too cold outside, the battery could set a fault code. It did not in all conditions, but a lot of times it did which resulted in, well, not a great experience with a replacement battery, right? 
So that was the biggest thing that we that Next Power needed to capture first was how do we solve the temperature range swing because we're going to have consumers that are in extreme cold, extreme heat, and everything in between. Now nickel metal, which was previously the most robust thing out there, already had solved that issue. So the question becomes, well, why not just figure a way to use nickel again? Again, 30 years of evolution uh, in the automotive industry and also in battery technology has led a lot of us, including me, down the road to say, well, there's probably got to be a better solution out there. Sodium ion has a great operating range down to negative 40 degrees Celsius, clear up until 60 degrees Celsius. That means if it's totally freezing outside or it's really hot outside, we have a seamless functionality between those temperature swings. Not to mention if you kind of look at how the case is constructed here, we have a lot of open uh, venting here so any heat that's in there can be dissipated and shoved out of the car to keep this battery in a better operating range. The second thing that I really appreciate about the sodium ion battery is its broad voltage range. Um, with nickel, with LFP, with some of the other battery chemistries that are out there, if the battery accidentally gets drained to zero, let's say that you ran out of gas and you had to drive, that can ruin that battery, especially if it's already been cycled a lot and it just doesn't have a lot of life left in it. It can just totally wipe it out, right? And nobody needs an error code. The good thing about the robustness of sodium ion is it can be charged to nearly zero volts and have minimum de degradation. That is really key because sometimes as humans, we all do silly things, right? I've actually ran my Prius out of gas accidentally on a long road trip. And uh, I can tell you, it's not a fun experience. Um, I am really grateful though to know that putting this battery into my vehicle, should that for some reason happen again, uh, I know that this battery is gonna have minimum degradation if it happens to get drained to zero. So the robustness of the battery is a big thing and that's another part of the functionality of the sodium ion battery. The third thing that I like to talk about is the cost effectiveness of the battery. Now you hear sodium and you go salt, right? That's exactly true. So sodium ion really does use, it, we call it a salt battery because it uses sodium uh, to build up the, the majority of the structure of the battery. So what does that mean? Well, sodium is very plentiful. Sodium is everywhere. And when you have a resource like that, that's plentiful and it's everywhere, that helps drive the cost down. The version that you're looking at today, which is the uh, new version three, that is, uh, will be available here soon. This is going to run around that $15 mark instead of you know, a new nickel metal battery that's gonna cost you well over $3,000 uh, if you go to the dealer and get it. Now, if you are doing a self-install and you go buy a new nickel battery from the dealer yourself, sometimes you can get that cheaper. But in a lot of cases where people just don't know how to work on these things, this is a very cost-effective solution. Which brings up a great point. If this is around the $1,500 mark and a used or refurbished battery is around the $1,500 mark, I would almost bet that this will probably be a better value for your dollar, simply because we're working with new material here, which New material typically always functions better in most conditions uh, because it had, this battery has no cycles on it, right? Used and refurbished batteries do. And they're kind of a guessing game if they're gonna last or if they're not. Now I have seen refurbished batteries go a long time. I have myself had really good luck refurbishing batteries and uh, putting those in customer's vehicles. Um, but I do feel that there is a better and more cost-effective solution and with sodium ion, I really feel that we have achieved that. The fourth thing that I really like about the sodium ion battery, and this particular one specifically is, if you notice, we have one wire harness, we have a connecting harness, and then on the other side here, where we have our main disconnect, and then we have one attachment for one bus bar. What does that mean? Well, previously, if you've ever dealt with this on nickel metal, 
those modules, the electrolyte can leak out of there causing corrosion, corroding the harness, and then you have a whole slew of different issues with a corroded harness. What Next Power has done with the sodium battery is they've done away with that harness. Everything is internally soldered and now we have a brand new clean set of wires that come through. So we're not dealing with that corrosion like we were in the nickel batteries. That's a huge win. Um, again, kind of going back to the refurbished batteries, you know, if you have a battery rebuilder out there that's not keen to uh, looking at how you're looking at the harness when they are reinstalling this, if there's corrosion on that battery and on that ECU, you're not going to get very far. That battery's not going to last as long. Um, and that's where this really comes in to win big is all new wiring with no corrosion. I think that is honestly looking at it is a huge value for the dollar and especially the price point on this simply because it's new, it's new, it's new. The fifth thing that I like, and I touched on this briefly in the fourth thing, but all the wires and everything are internally soldered, right? So going back to the corrosion issue that we have with leaking electrolyte from nickel metal, we are, we're doing away with that. Now, I would tell anybody who isn't going to install one of these, definitely check the ECU side and make sure that on your pins that you have no corrosion. Uh, corrosion is a killer for all sorts of different things. Make sure that when you do your install that you have a corrosion-free ECU. We already know if you're going to use this particular version, there should be zero corrosion on this, which is going to give you, again, one of the best value uh, offers for your dollar when putting this into your vehicle. Also having everything internally soldered typically means we have less failure points. Um, I know someone's gonna argue with me on that, but if everything is manufactured to a high quality standard where everything's soldered and the job is done right, we should have very minimal failure points. So I think that's a big win for, the, uh, for Next Power and this sodium ion battery. The sixth thing, easy installation. If you look at what we have here, we have two blocks that go together. We've got one main connection that's going to our battery ECU and then right here we have our main battery disconnect. Yes, there's little rubber nubs on here so I can't I can't feel anything. And then we have one more connection right here with one bus bar. Also on the bottom you'll find that there are um, Places just like you'd find on the standard nickel metal modules where you can put the bolts in to strap to bolt that down to the case. So it's a very, very easy installation. We're not dealing with 28 modules or even the 14 modules like we saw with the previous versions of the LFP batteries that Next Power put out. We've got two big blocks, adequate ventilation, real simple stuff here, and that is a huge win for anybody that is doing this DIY or even shops that are working on flat rate. Uh, it makes sense from a flat rate standpoint to be able to do something quickly and have a quick turnaround time because that's how a lot of the automotive industry works. Uh, so having all of that, the simpleness, the ease of installation is a huge, huge win here. The seventh thing that I wanna talk about is the versatility of cell sourcing. I touched on this a little bit earlier about how we're basically using salt in these batteries, right? Salt is everywhere, salt is plentiful. The other cool thing about it too is, guess what? If it breaks down over time, right? It's the salt of the earth. So we're also helping minimize an environmental, in an, in an environmental way, uh, we're trying to source things that are environmentally friendly, because I don't know if you're the same way, but I like living on this earth. It's pretty great, and I'd like to do my part to take care of it. So the ability to use things that are around us that can also not have such a big impact on our future as humans here on this earth, to me, that's a huge win. And I really like that about the sodium ion battery. I want to take a few minutes and I want to talk about sodium ion, why sodium ion, who's using this, who's done research on it, and why this isn't just some, you know, off the cuff, like, oh, I'm just going to try this thing. If you've ever heard of the car brand Tesla, then you would be very familiar that Tesla is a global company selling electric cars globally. Tesla works with 
different battery manufacturers all over the world, one of those being the Chinese battery manufacturer CATL. Uh, CATL has done tons of research over the years on different battery types, and they've also done a lot of battery research on sodium ion and, and its life expectancy, uh, where to uh, source it, all those different types of things, and how it can be a game changer for the hybrid vehicles and also the electric vehicles that we'll see here in the future. With a huge company like CATL that is working with a massive company like Tesla, that tells me a thing or two. If they've done a lot of research and, and proven that sodium ion is a viable product, a viable cell source to use for things like electric cars, I would think that putting them into an application such as a hybrid would be perfectly acceptable. Um, that gives me some hope and some reassurance that this isn't just some one-off thing that uh, Next Power has done to try to drum up business, but they've really done some research here to say, hey, what, what is our problem and how do we find a really good solution for that problem that makes sense? So kudos to CATL, Tesla, and those other companies that have done a lot of research on sodium ion and shown how it can be viable in the market for not only hybrids, but also EVs and all the different types of batteries that we'll see here in the future. I think something that is very interesting that I have seen trends in in the automotive industry is a lot of uh, consumers switching out their old lead acid batteries to like lithium ion batteries, right? And why, why would they do that? Um, they do that because you're getting better battery technology. Lead acid batteries have been around for gal, well over 100 years. And that technology, again, it's good, it's robust, but we have come a long way as humans. We've done a lot of research into battery technology to know that there are better things that are, again, more environmentally friendly, uh, that can be sourced easier, and probably have less health hazards as well, too. Um, I don't know if you've ever dealt with lead acid uh, as a viewer, I have dealt with lead acid being in the automotive industry for as long as I have. And uh, I can tell you getting electrolyte on your skin burns because it is literally acid, right? It will eat through whatever. That's why batteries are built in very specific uh, plastic type cases is to keep that electrolyte from spilling and corroding everything around it. Um, which again brings me back to that corrosion factor. Uh, the sodium ion, let's say that this you know, decided that it was going to leak. Um, it would have minimal corrosion, and it's encased in a nice plastic uh, box here that's not going to just corrode. It would really have to weep out of there. But the way these are designed, we shouldn't see any of that. Um, so that's something that I do feel is, again, a real big win here for the sodium ion battery from Next Power. I just want to take a minute and give you kind of a walk around of the battery, show you some of the work that's been done. Um, you can see that the chassis here is outlined to be able to take the positive and negative um, terminals that are on your battery now and reuse those. So some of the parts that you will be seeing reused on this battery are going to be things like the main disconnect. We're going to be using a one bus bar here to connect those two. And then, of course, on the other side, like I just showed you, the positive and negative wires. It's a very simple, very straightforward design. Again, lots of ventilation. Um, when we put the connection bars on top, uh, we'll have temperature probes up here, and then the temperature probes are on the bottom. All of that is also lined out right here uh, in the instructions. Uh, they've done a really good job at showing, you know, step by step how to put this together. And that's something that I applaud them for. Um, you can see right here I'm showing on the front where we're going to use this, we'll use the uh, previous components. Um, the first users are getting a 3D printed ABS plastic uh, type. I'm one of those users, and so I get the joy and privilege of, uh, of running with this. The ones that will be coming from the factory will be injection molded. They'll be a bit stronger. Um, so the first people that to adopt these batteries will have a 3D printed case. They'll be kind of a, a limited edition run if you want to look at it like that. And I think that's really neat. Um, but again, very simple design. We've got our, our battery controllers up here. 
uh, and just everything about it is pretty easy, very straightforward to see. And uh, again, uh, I even like that I've got a, a hand signature build date on this thing. And uh, even though it's July now, um, I still get that little signature build, you know, build number 65 on this one. So really, really cool stuff. Um, but yeah, let's give this a final overview and wrap up. So what's my take on it? I really feel that Next Power has done something really great for the consumer in bringing the cost down, bringing us a better uh, technology here uh, with the sodium ion. I feel that uh, is, is they have really put forth their best effort to try and make as many customers as happy as possible that they're doing the right thing here. Um, you know, this video that I'm putting out isn't gonna be for everybody. There's, there's gonna be people out there that are total naysayers, and that's okay. You don't have to use this in your car if you don't want to. I'm doing it because I believe there is a better future for hybrid batteries, one that involves less of a footprint, one that involves a better cost, one that involves reliability, durability, and a high quality standard that we've come to expect from a Toyota vehicle I would expect that same mentality to be put into something uh, like a hybrid battery. So when you're on vacation, when you're on a road trip, whether you're going to town to buy groceries, whatever that is, you can count on your hybrid battery to do that. Um, no company is perfect. There have been you know different things running around the internet about this, that, or the other, about the previous version batteries. Working as closely as I have with Next Power, I can tell you that they have taken that very seriously to ensure that every customer is taken care of as much as possible. Um, I can also say that I think this is a step in the right direction for continuing to give customers what they are looking for, which is to keep their vehicle on the road at an affordable cost. Um, that being said, what do I think about nickel metal hydride batteries? I think they're great. I think that if you want your vehicle to uh, perform as it did originally from the factory, you can spend the money and you can get a nickel metal hydride battery and an OE one. I think that you know that is definitely a good option. We do have data and time uh, that has proven that technology to be good here. One thing that Next Power has done, which they never had to do, is they put out a beta tester program for people to put these in their vehicles and say, drive them test them, torture test them, do anything you can to try and make this battery fail. So far, the results that have come back from the sodium ion battery have been absolutely flawless. We have seen so far, from what I now know, extreme cold conditions, not a problem. Extreme heat conditions, not a problem. Everything in between, totally awesome. So I really feel that this is a good step in the right direction. Um, time will tell. I think that uh, Project Lithium and Next Power, you know, they have certainly done everything they can to try and help with that. Um, and they're going, they're going up against, you know, big companies in the automotive industry. They're going up against Toyota. They're going up against all these big battery remanufacturers like Green Tech and Green Bean and Dorman and all these companies that remanufacture batteries, right? Not to mention even like the little local guys that do battery reconditioning as well. What I'm really excited for as an automotive enthusiast, as a hybrid user, is if this is an option that I can give my, can, that I can give my customer at a better price, I'm all for it, right? I wanna see any customer that drive, any person that is utilizing a hybrid to get the most out of it. I really believe in these little cars. And quite honestly, it's one of the best vehicles that I've ever owned. Um, you know, I stayed away from that for years because I, I didn't want to have the Prius stigma, but I, in some ways I kind of kicked myself for that, for being so ignorant towards it. But I can tell you they're great, they're great cars. And if that same mentality has been carried over to building uh, these new hybrid batteries, this sodium ion battery, then I think we have a real win here. Um, Again, you know, I give huge, a huge thanks to uh, Next Power and the team that is putting these together for everybody. And I look forward to more collaborations, more videos, more uh, testing, and uh, more data and information that can come out for the consumer on these batteries. 
I want to thank you so much for being part of this video today. If you haven't yet, please hit that like and subscribe button so you can keep getting awesome updates from me. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, if there's something that you want to see in a video that I can help provide, please let me know. I'm very happy to take the time to work with any one of my viewers that may just have a question. If you haven't visited, if you haven't been over to visit my website, certifiedautoconsulting.com, you can actually book time with me and I'm happy to chat with you on hybrid related questions. Um, whether that's buying a new one, uh, talking about batteries, anything like that that you want to do, definitely do that. But thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope that one of these awesome batteries can find, it, uh, find its way into your hybrid here soon. Thanks so much, and we'll see you in the next episode.